So what is an enzyme? An enzyme is a molecule that lowers the energy required to make some sort of reaction take place in the body. The reaction could take place without the enzyme, but it would be much more difficult, so it wouldn't happen nearly as often. All right, so in this diagram, this gray molecule is our enzyme, and we our, our enzyme becomes active once the substrate specific to it binds. All right, so here's our example substrate molecule. Um, notice that the shape of them fit together. So when they come together into the enzyme substrate complex, that is when we have our activated enzyme and it's going to act, it's going to act on that substrate to do some sort of action. So let's use a metaphor to help us here. All right, so here we have this person who's trying to get down to the waters and you know maybe fish or swim or do whatever this person's trying to do down at the water. And there's this wall in the, in the way. And in the wall is a door with a keyhole and this person may or may not have the key. All right, so the key is the is the substrate, and the enzyme uh, is the is the keyhole here. So if we do not have the key, the person has to go up and above and up and over the wall in order to get to the water. So a lot of energy is is used to get over this wall. When we have the key, we can go right through the door. So we just open the door. A little bit of energy is used, but not nearly as much energy. All right, so how does this work in the body in real life? So getting beyond the metaphor here. All right, so we have energy that has to be put into the reaction or in order to activate it and make it go forward. And so this is our activation energy. Everything above this green line here in this red space is our activation energy. So we wanna minimize our activation energy to make the process as efficient as possible. Once the reaction is activated, it's going to go all the way. It's going to break down the substrate into whatever it's gonna be broken down into or combine the substrate with another substrate into whatever it's gonna be combined into. Um, in this process, we're talking about energy, so typically it's gonna be broken down though. If we have the enzyme present, the activation energy, again, is much smaller um, in order to get this process to, to carry out breaking down the substrate, and so, if you were to look at all this, so we have our loss energy, which is our sort of activation investment energy. Our loss energy is much larger without the enzyme than it is with the enzyme. The amount of energy gained from breaking down the molecule is the same, so we have the same amount of gained energy. However, the gained energy is not what necessarily is important, it's the net energy. So removing the lost energy from the gained energy gives you your net. So without the enzyme present, we get some energy. With the enzyme present, we get quite a bit more energy, net energy out of breaking down this substrate. Because again, you don't need to have as much investment energy in order to get the substrate to break down. Most enzymes are going to end in the letters ASE. So anytime you hear something ending in ASE, it's probably an enzyme. What are the factors that regulate enzymes? There are several out there, but the two of the big ones are temperature and pH or acidity. So as the body's temperature goes up, the enzymes typically, most enzymes are going to increase their activity. So this is something that happens with exercise. So as our bodies heat up, our enzymes become more active. Um, pH, as the pH reduces, so as we become, become more acidic, which also happens during exercise, typically enzymes actually become less active this way. So the heat produced during exercise typically increases enzyme activity, where the acidity that's produced, or the extra acid that's produced with exercise is typically going to decrease the enzyme activity. And I just want to one more time emphasize that the enzyme and substrate need to fit together. It's a lock and key style model. Um, if they don't fit together properly, their, their physical form is not the proper form in order to you know, get and combine together, then it's not going to happen. So if anything uh, changes the shape of these enzymes, so any of these these various modulating factors can possibly change the shape of the enzyme or the substrate. It's going to make it so it's harder for these two, the substrate and the enzyme, in order to get together and have their action. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how enzymes actually control the rate of bioenergetics. And so um, we have what we call rate limiting enzymes. These are the enzymes in each bioenergetic pathway that is going to be the either the slowest or the most scarce, so the, the 
not there's not enough of it essentially to go around in order to make the pathway go quickly. And so whichever is the uh, the slowest or the most scarce enzyme is typically going to be your rate limiting enzyme. And it's the pro it is the enzyme that slows down the metabolic pathway and controls how quickly that pathway moves forward. So if you were to improve the rate limiting enzyme, you'd actually speed up the pathway so you can get more energy out of that pathway. All right, so what are some various modulators of these enzymes besides just temperature and pH? Um, so um, ATP, ADP, so the broken down version of ATP, and also the, the inorganic phosphate coming off of the ATP when it's broken down, those are all very common modulators. Um, typically, um, when you have high levels of ATP, it's going to inhibit the, um, the bioenergetic pathways and the enzymes that are the rate limiting enzymes. When you have low amounts of ATP, meaning you, your body needs to produce it, that's going to speed up the, the pathways and speed up these rate limiting enzymes. Likewise, if you have a lot of the breakdown product of ATP, so again, the ADP and the inorganic phosphate, it's also going to stimulate these enzymes. A lot of the enzymes are going to work through a negative feedback system. So basically, as you produce and stockpile the end products of those processes, you're going to slow down the process. It's going to feed back and give a negative feedback on the process to slow down because you have you have a lot of the, of the product anyways. You have a stockpile of the products. So you don't need to make more. So it kind of makes sense that you use a negative feedback system to help modulate the bioenergetic pathways and the, the rate limiting enzyme speed. All right, so what are the various rate limiting enzymes and specific stimulators and inhibitors of the various metabolic processes? So phosphocreatine's rate limiting enzyme is creatine kinase, which is actually the only enzyme in the, cre the phosphocreatine pathway. It's going to be stimulated by ADP and it's going to be inhibited by ATP, just like I mentioned already. Glycolysis, the rate limiting enzyme is the uh, phosphofructokinase, and it's going to be stimulated by AMP, which is also a breakdown product of ATP um, breakdown. Um, so it's basically when you break down, when you pull off two of the phosphates, so you get adenosine monophosphate, so a single phosphate, the ADP, the inorganic phosphate, or a high pH. Um, inhibitors are going to be ATP, phosphocreatine, citrate, and uh, low pH. The Krebs cycle, the rate limiting enzyme is isocitrate dehydrogenase. The stimulators are ADP, calcium, NAD. The inhibitors are ATP and NADH. In the electron transport chain, the rate limiting enzyme is cytochrome oxidase. The stimulators are ADP and inorganic phosphate. In the inhibitor, the primary inhibitor is ATP. There's additional molecules that likely stimulate and inhibit each of these processes, but these are the big ones that I mentioned here. Hopefully this video on enzymes and bioenergetics was helpful to you. I'll put a link in the description below to a summary video on bioenergetics, and I'll also put links in the, the description below on uh, the specific video on carbohydrate breakdown and a specific video on fat breakdown and a specific video on aerobic metabolism.